Here are six reasons why video games are the best way to learn painting. I hope one day I'll be able to use it not awkwardly. Also, the handle is so small, I think it's made for little kids. Anyway, reason number six. It's fun and inspiring. Games are the most elaborate and immersive art medium out there. So for many people, there's no argument about it. We're already hooked on games quite a lot. All we have to do is start using them to actually self-improve as artists. And if you're not into games, I think it's time to rethink your view on that subject, because the market of games became so big right now, it's actually the biggest market out there for a while now, bigger than movies and music combined, and in 2020 it became even bigger than sports market. I saw a news article saying that, so that's probably true. Reason number five. Games are relevant, modern and fast. Again, as an art medium. Computer technologies are a great base for implementing the latest and greatest everything. It's frequently aimed at a younger audience, so it's always easy to find the most recent and innovative art styles. You can easily see how in 3D graphics of modern games, it's very easy to visualize sci-fi and futuristic and like underground modern stuff. And it will look just right, since 3D graphics is sort of associated with um, new styles, new waves of things. While at the same time, 3D games definitely proved themselves in being awesome at, I don't know, cowboy themes, medieval fantasy stuff. You can visualize very artistic, old school and natural environments. And of course, it's a great place to show something very new, modern high tech stuff. So that's where you can find examples, references of any world in any art style in its best form. Now, before I continue with the next reason why games are awesome for artists, a quick word from this channel sponsor, Wingfox. As you can see, it's heavily inspired by Lord of the Rings and the Dark Souls series as well. Alexander Holt is a concept artist at Ubisoft Stockholm, and he's here to share his way of creating incredible concept art in his new course. The Lost Soldier Environment Concept Design is an 11-hour tutorial where you'll learn powerful and lightning-fast ways of developing a complex scene with impressive detail and realistic rendering. Alexander is using Photoshop and Blender 2.8 to build complex composition and geometry in just a few simple and clever steps. You'll work on a composition sketch, specific asset sketches, modeling the assets and blocking out the scene in 3D. The course also covers the creation of materials, lighting and rendering of the scene. In the end of the course, you'll finalize the image by painting and applying photo textures to quickly achieve realistic results. Get the Lost Soldier course with a 47% discount at $69. Reason number four. Games are real-time, live, customizable 3D worlds. Which means you have a whole lot of freedom. Comparing to movies where you can just, you know, pause and take a snapshot of the screen and uh, it will always be of a movie format and whatever. In games you can just walk there, find the best angle and take a shot. Plus, it's very trendy right now to have all these photo modes in games where you can literally pause the game at any moment, even like a super action-packed moment where you're fighting someone, and just find the best angle, change the poses, the lighting, the bokeh, the focal length of your camera, everything, then add some filters and whatever, and that will be your screenshot. That's These are the tools literally made for artists to study anything they want, pretty much. Plus, on top of that, games with their real-time 3D engines, especially on PC, have been the only art medium educating people worldwide about how 3D graphics work. You can turn on and off ray tracing and see the difference, you can understand what the reflected light is and how it works. You can see how reflections act in different situations. It's amazing, you can literally learn in practice the physics of lighting and materials. Reason number three. It just so happens that modern games are just obsessed with realism. And there's also a great artistic rivalry. Which means the developers use either actual photos of locations and people to create their worlds, or they're using the concept art made by the artists 
that has been using photos as the reference anyway. So everything is based on real world and it's very much welcome in the industry to do that a lot. So you always know that you're getting not just based on realistic reference material, but actually processed optimized, improved and made into something that's elaborate, made specifically to look good. That's something very important to learn that you can't find in just photography in a real world. And as games become more and more realistic, every developer is trying to stand out with a specific flashy art style, which is an amazing thing to explore as well. And you can easily choose that. When you're looking at games in the store or watching trailers, you can't tell if the game is gonna be good or not, but you can definitely tell if the art style is awesome. Reason number two. And this reason is actually the one that I started from, so I think it's a really good one and specifically pointing at games. Polygons. Right now we live in this perfect age of gaming for artists, because the technology grew to the point where the developers can use enough polygons to have any kind of artistic freedom, they can visualize anything they want, but it's not that much of polygons, not that much of particles and light sources and details that they could be just reckless and not think about and throw polygons around without thinking, which is really good because when you're creating a painting, you can't throw around brush strokes as well. You need to visualize everything with clean brushwork. And when you're using games as reference, all you need to do is just transform triangles into brush strokes, because the limited machine resources and games lead to creative stylization, which is awesome. It's something that you should be doing no matter what your art style is. Even if it's hyper realistic, you still have to keep in mind that you can only visualize brush strokes. It can't be pixel precise reality. So things like grass and hair need to combine in certain brush strokes and stylized into simplified shapes that make sense that introduce certain dynamics and just feeling of the actual overall shape before it breaks down into smaller details. That's exactly what developers of games do a lot, because they have no other choice yet. And finally, the reason number one. And I think this is one of the most unique, inspiring things about this art medium of games. is the fact that any game is pretty much a product of iterative improvement. It's the most thought through art medium. Contrary to any other visual art medium, the creators of games can change anything about anyone in the shot or in, in the story, in everything, at any point. Because it's real-time graphics and a lot of things can be tweaked, so they have a lot of freedom to improve stuff to make it the closest to perfect. Plus, it's the only art medium that can be developed post-release, which is a very popular thing to do lately for big games. The developers listen to their audience and improve the game, fix stuff, change things that most people don't like. And of course there are mods. Modding community is pushing games further than any like highest budget Hollywood movie could ever go. Because no budget will ever give you the amount of time and effort and inspiration that hundreds of fans developing the game further for years can introduce to a game. So it's the most collaborative medium, which means when you're using a game as a reference, it's a pretty good reference that a lot of people put their thoughts in. Also, games have a much broader spectrum of either being highly collaborative or being highly standalone projects. So if we talk about very expensive games, their budgets pretty much reach the Hollywood movie budgets, which introduces a lot of great resources for game developers, but also games become very safe. PG-13 and everything is wishy-washy not to offend anyone and stuff like that. So that's a downside that pretty much all the movies have at this day and age. But in gaming, we can turn to indie developers, which in many cases can be just a one-man project. And that makes that game a fully artistic, 
like one artist project, fully elaborate and fully expressive, experimental and maybe risky at times, which is incredibly precious to have. While at the same time, it's worth noting that luckily we still don't have this elitist social stigma around games the way we have around movies, with all these Hollywood stars and directors that are celebrities. Like imagine Nolan listening to his audience and changing something about his movie. Yeah, right. But game developers are not celebrities. They're normal people that are trying together to create the best game for everyone to enjoy. They'll just go ahead and make it better the way most people think should be done. I mean, we have Kojima, but he's like one exception from the rule so far. So yeah, these are my thoughts. They're pretty raw, I guess. I mean, they're not raw. I made a list, so it's pretty thought through, but it's not really supported in practice. I haven't used a lot of references from games to create something, but whenever I do that, it's one of the best things I ever do. It's a huge difference from using a photo reference. Photo references are garbage comparing to game references. They're so much better, because this way you're learning from other artists, which is a very important thing to do. Like, of course, it's not best for everything. For instance, the anatomy animation in games is not that great so far. Even the main character usually doesn't really have, like, you know, dynamic muscle tension and everything when they move around. The technology is not quite there yet. So for that, you could use photos, I guess. But in general, for landscapes, Oh my god, for any kind of stuff that is um, world related, it's just amazing. I'm really planning in 2021 to use a lot of that, a lot of games to implement into my research as an artist. I think it's gonna be awesome. And yeah, these are my thoughts on that. Tell me guys what you think about it. I felt like making a video like this just because not a lot of people seem to talk about it. No one actually uses screenshots from games to study painting and I think it's really awesome to do. So yeah, I guess this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Now you'd think I'm drinking coffee, but it's actually chicory. My Kardashian rhythms are gonna stay awesome. ASMR blooper.